Well, it's the end of another month. I've got a stack of newspapers to go through. If you're interested in what's been going on in the motorcycle news here in the UK in the month of October 2018, stick around and stay tuned. Hey kids, Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Well, what a busy month it's been in the world of motorcycling. We've uh, said cheerio to summer, unfortunately, here in Blighty. That beautiful summer that we've had is now somewhat of a long distance memory as uh, the frost start to come in the cold weather. We've had some horrible days. We've got a lovely day today, but uh, we're in that sort of time of year. The salt is starting to be laid on the roads. Soon be time to get the ACF 50 out and everything else. Anyway, uh, let's not worry too much because there is a bit of upside in that this is the time of year that all the new bikes get announced and uh, MCN has been full of all the new bike news over the last month. So let's get cracking with the reviews and uh, see what we've got to, to report this month. Okay, first story then from the paper from uh, four weeks ago or the 3rd of October. Uh, is this one, Suzuki Katana, the legendary street brawling superbike is back, is the headline. Uh, and again, I just wondered what you thought of this. Now, the Katana really, uh, it's, I've sort of missed it. It was kind of um, before my time, if you like. It's a bike that uh, um, was around in the 1980s and was very successful for Suzuki. And they've kind of re, um, reimagined it, brought the name back in the hope that they'll have a successful bike on their hands. Well, here it is. Uh, what do you think of that thing? I have to say, um, it looks horrible, I think. It might just be me, but the styling just doesn't do it for me. I don't, um, I, it, just, it just doesn't work. It's a 999cc uh, transverse four. So it's going to, it's a four cylinder thousand cc bike, basically. 148 brake, brake horsepower. So no lack of power there, uh, and 215 kilograms wet. So relatively heavy, um, but I don't know who quite who that's aimed at. I suppose it's supposed to be a sort of bruising naked, but uh, don't like it at all, I'm afraid, Suzuki. Absolutely yucky. Uh, anyway, we'll see. Maybe I'll get to ride one in the future, and we'll see how it rides, but it uh, doesn't do it for me. Interested to see what you think. Are they on to a winner with a new Katana, or is it a, it is for me. All right, next story. Uh, Triumph Street Twin and Scrambler. They've got a revamp. I love the Street Twin and the Street Scrambler. Uh, absolutely beautiful little bikes. I don't know why I say little bikes because they're 900cc. But anyway, they've had a revamp um, and they've upped the power somewhat. So they're now putting out uh, something like 18% more power. Uh, so 10 horsepower on top. So instead of um, 54 horsepower, now something like 64, if my maths is right. Um, but yeah, so they're looking, they're looking great. There's a, there's some engine changes as well. The engine spins up a bit faster, so it's going to be a bit more lively. So again, hopefully when these hit the streets, I'll get to have a go on these as well. We'll be talking more about the scrambler later, I'm sure, because of course the new one has broken cover. Uh, but anyway, that's the street scrambler, the, the sort of baby brother, if you like, and the street twin as well has got a similar uh, revamp. So really looking forward to seeing those in the flesh. Both brilliant bikes, both great. Um, prices and both great starting points for if you want to do some customization or indeed if you're new into bike and you want your first bike that's going to be unintimidating and you like the whole retro look can't recommend those highly enough i love the triumphs Alrighty, so that's those been revamped next one here whizzing through this because i've got a lot of stories to get through this week uh, yamaha yzf r 125 the best 125 sports bike gets a radical redesign for 2019 here it is here's a picture of it what an amazing looking bike the only reason i bought, bought this out is number one i quite like 125s i just think they're good fun people that poo poo small lightweight bikes are missing out you can absolutely thrash the pants off them they're really good fun to ride but this one i just think yamaha have really uh, really done the right thing unlike uh, suzuki with the katana this thing absolutely looks amazing look it's got uh, very much r1 dna uh, running through it i think it looks somewhat like the r1 i think it looks really good if you're new into bikes and you wanted a sports bike then this surely is the one you're going to look at not sure about that colour, but I'm sure it comes in other colours. Um, you know, not not action exciting bike. It's one two four point seven cc single. Um, fourteen point seven bhp has to be that to get through the regulations to be um, license friendly for those starting out. One hundred and forty two kilograms wet though, so beautifully light, fantastic. Don't know what the price is going to be yet, but it absolutely looks great. So again, hopefully maybe I'll get a chance to have a go on one of those in the new year as well. So well done Yamaha on that one. That looks really nice. Okay, oh, and again, another new bike, uh, but this one, we're going from nice to not nice. This this is the new um, Scrambler from Ducati. Now, I love Ducatis. I'm a Ducati owner. I'm a Ducati fanboy, but the Scrambler, for some reason, just doesn't do it for me, um, and I love Scramblers. I'm a, I, you know, Scramblers are my favourite genre, but what they've done here is mixed it up with a cafe racer. So this one is confusingly called the Scrambler Cafe Racer. What? What is going on there? So this is, um, well, I don't know. Again, I'm interested to see what you think. I, I personally, I've said it before, I'm not a big fan of cafe racers. This is a complete halfway house. It neither looks like a cafe racer nor a scrambler. Not too sure who it's going to appeal to. Anyway, 103cc, 72 brake horsepower. So it's not going to break any records, but at the same time, 
plenty of power. Um, doesn't uh, price 8150 for the Icon version. So good price, it has to be said. Again, if you're just getting into bike and you like this style, it might be one to, to go for. I'm sure it's a, I'm sure it rides great and it's made well and everything else, but the looks no, doesn't do it for me. Okay, so that's that. And on the other page here, we've got the Indian FTR 1200, which looks absolutely amazing. We talked about that last time. Beautiful bike. All right, next up in this paper, fifth store is actually a letter that came in and it's entitled go back to basics bmw it comes from somebody called andrew blee from stroud hello andrew if you happen to watch um and uh he's basically well i'll read out the, the salient points uh, which gs owners were asking for more torque more power and more complexity the existing bike heaves itself forward easily enough and 130 miles an hour is all my bike needs um it's got four percent improvement in efficiency in efficiency so eight miles more range um and basically he's saying that um, you know focusing on complexity and features while owners really want a significant improvement in efficiency i.e. running costs they're missing you know and they're cutting weight they're missing the point what do you think to that I, I tend to agree actually with Andrew I mean to be fair on BMW they have brought out the brand new F850 GS and the F750 GS if you want something that's a little bit more economic in terms of cost to buy um, a little bit lighter easier to move around then those are maybe the bikes to go for the new GS 1250 is what uh, Andrew here is referring to of course is a lovely bike to ride I did get to ride it this month I've got a little video up on the channel if you haven't seen that no I didn't get to ride it sorry uh, yes I did what am I talking about I did get to ride it, blimey, um, and it was absolutely lovely, but again, not a massive leap forward from the existing GS. It's not uh, nice, uh, the new features aren't enough to make me go out and want to buy a new one, replace my 2014 model year with one. Uh, but anyway, a very interesting point, uh, and something I've heard from various commenters on my videos why don't we go back to basics? Uh, these things are getting too complex, more things to go wrong, much too much uh, expensive. Let's get some simple bikes out there. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see if there's a backlash and whether the manufacturers respond. Again, interested to hear your views on that. Then the last story I've picked out in this first paper, uh, Back to the Future. Now this completely ties in to what I was just saying. This is the new Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. Something that we've been talking about on this channel for ages. It was launched well over a year ago. Well, not launched, but announced well over a year ago. And I've been waiting to have a go on it ever since. I have been lucky enough to sit on the prototype. It felt like it looked really well made, especially for a prototype type uh, and it has now I believe had the um, sort of global launch which happened in California and MCM went along and these are some of the pictures from there um, so um, and this may well answer that point about you know where are the back to um, simple bikes this bike is uh, it's got what you need and no more but it looks fantastic at least on the pictures um, this is the first review I've read of it it's the first one that's come out uh, and they love it um, they say it's absolutely great the only thing that lets it down is when it gets a hop on uh, the suspension can get a little bit out of shape but that's probably because it's you know a bit budget on the suspension and could be upgraded but I think it looks absolutely lovely. I really can't wait to ride this. This is a proper retro bike. Uh, really like the look of this. And if the price is good, I don't know if the price is out yet. They're, they're estimating, they being um, Motorcycle News, that it'll be £5,495 on the road. Five and a half grand for a bike that looks that good. I think Trump should be quaking in their boots if it turns out to ride well. And MCN seem to think it does, so that's definitely one to watch. So uh, roll on those being available in the dealers and, and us getting a ride. Okay, so here we go. This is the edition from uh, Wednesday, October the 10th. Uh, just picked out four stories here, and the uh, picture on the front of the uh, paper is the new Norton Commando Street, of which more in a moment. But the first story that I've picked out here is tucked away just in the bottom here. Careful on the NC500. This is the North Coast 500, the brilliant run that you can do around the coast of Scotland. I thoroughly recommend it if you haven't done it, if you haven't uh, done it yet. Um, if you want to get a flavour of what it's like, I, I rode this last year and I made a, a series of videos all about riding the GS around the North Coast 500. Uh, it was a great, great ride, spectacular scenery. It doesn't cost a lot to do. Um, so get yourself down there if you haven't done it. However, do be careful because what this little article is saying is that the police are saying that uh, some numpties have been putting tax along the road uh, in order to catch people out. And uh, on one weekend, I think it says the roof nails, in fact, uh, tax have been found scattered on a road that forms part of the popular North Coast 500. Roof now is found on numerous locations along the A3 a836 sorry in the last year and many incidents being reported so do be careful about that hopefully uh, now that this is out there and the police obviously know about it they've gone and cleared them but they could be uh, tax out there so hopefully they've gone by now this is a few weeks old as i say but what a thing to do what are these idiots thinking of um if you are going to do the nc500 just stick a puncher outfit under your seat because uh, some parts of that are remote and if you get a puncher out there you may not get phone reception so just be aware of that so just one i thought i would bring to your attention as a bit of a public service announcement okay anyway but the main thing on this paper i want to draw your attention to is this street special is the uh, is the heading here this is the norton commando 961 this is a 50 bike special run uh, and it's absolutely beautiful it's based on the 
standard 961 Commando, but uh, I don't know if you watch Henry Cole, and uh, I think it's called the motorbike show that he does, this last season that was on, uh, he took the standard 961 and took on the project to make it a bit more uh, customised, to make it look a bit more street, uh, while still having it within the regulations of uh, Euro 4 or 5, whatever the current one is that the bike's um, on. And uh, basically, um, Henry Cole did that. It looked absolutely fantastic. He went and showed it to uh, the owner, uh, Stuart Garner, I think his name is, isn't it? Yeah, Stuart Garner. And he absolutely loved it on the programme. It obviously wasn't fake because Norton have now said they're actually going to make the bike for 50 of, of these. It's got this fantastic fuel tank, uh, a different shaped rear end, just, just makes it look smart. It's got Odin suspension, uh, absolutely lovely. As I say, it's got a rental um, handlebar as well. I think it is nicer looking than the original uh, 961. So uh, yeah, what a cracking bike. But if you want one, there's only 50 being made. They may already been sold uh, get your deposit down quickly uh, does it say how much they're gonna be quick look uh, 17,950 which is an awful lot of money for a, a bike of this type but it is it is rare you won't see many of them on the road uh, if you've got uh, 18 grand burning hole in your pocket and you don't want a new GS get yourself one of these absolutely beautiful looking bike and uh, wouldn't it be great to have a ride of such a beast Anyway, maybe one day I'll get to ride a Norton, who knows? Maybe when I get to a million subscribers. Okay, uh, moving on, uh, next one. Uh, Suzuki, 10 new bikes in three years. This is an announcement that they've made, uh, is that they're, they're now going for the platform approach, something that uh, Triumph have done for a while, then Yamaha did with their, when they introduced the MT-0 range a few years back. Suzuki are now saying they're gonna do the same thing, and there's gonna be 10 new bikes out by 2020. So exciting stuff. All I can say is, let's hope they look a bit better than this uh, Katana that we talked about in the previous paper. What a horrible looking thing. Sorry, Suzuki. Anyway, uh, looking forward to seeing the other, of the, or the other nine new bikes that they're gonna bring out. They're gonna be busy over the next few years and uh, we're going to be seeing those at the uh, at the motorcycle shows incidentally the katana is at motorcycle live uh, this november so uh, you can go and have a look at it in the flesh if you want to all right then i may give that a miss uh, number four in here ah yes mcn have been out on their um, test run the mcn 250 as they called it and they've taken the nikon this is the um, three wheeled uh, two wheel at the front, one wheel at the back yamaha that we've seen for a while now again it was announced and it was in the shows last year, very few of them around. I've never actually seen one in the flesh other than at the shows. Um, but there we go, it's, uh, it's, uh, they've tested it now. 13 and a half grand is what it costs. Uh, they really liked it, and it was uh, Michael Neves that uh, rode it, and he's my favorite road tester for MCN. Uh, and he says it's absolutely cracking. But the downside is he's not, he's not too sure who's gonna buy it. It was great fun, the grip on the front end was amazing. Um, but who is gonna buy this sort of bike? So I don't know is the answer. We'll see how well it does. I'm not sure it'll do great in the UK, maybe it will, but I'm not sure, um, we'll see. I certainly love the looks of it and I certainly wanna go on one, but uh, I'm, again, I'm not sure that I would buy one, but who knows until you've ridden it. But uh, anyway, uh, Michael Neves absolutely loved it, so that was good. So that was a quickie on the, uh, on the second paper. Much more to go though, stay tuned. Alrighty, next paper then. This is the big one because this is the paper, uh, the date on it in case you want to get a copy of back order is October the 17th. This is the one with all the uh, bikes of the year in from uh, MCN, the bikes that they think are the best ones that have been launched this year. So um, we'll be going through some of those in a minute. Okay, so first uh, story that I picked out here, um, new Multistrada uh, multi Enduro uh, hits the streets. Uh, this is the 2019 model. It's now 12.62cc. Um, and obviously liquid cooled V twin uh, puts out 156 brake horsepower now, which is amazing. Um, what's the cost of it? Let's have a look. Uh, can't quite see in here what the cost is going to be, but it ain't going to be cheap. But you are going to again. This is another one you can see a motorcycle live. I love the looks of the uh, Multistrada. Sadly, I've not sort of gelled with it. Whether whenever I've ridden one, I haven't ridden the 1260, obviously, or the latest generation of the big bike. But I've ridden the uh, the smaller version. I've ridden an older generation, a three years old one, or three years ago I, I rode a new one. Put it that way. Um, I just found the top heavy uh, and I imagine they're still the same but I'm, I'm willing to be my mind to be changed uh, I do talk to Ducati on a regular basis maybe next year I'll get to ride one of these and and we'll see yeah but it looks absolutely stonking it's laden with technology it's a beautiful beautiful bike there's no doubt about that um, just for me as a bit of a shorty and a bit of a weakling I think I might struggle to heft one of these around but uh, a lovely looking bike an amazing performance uh, I would imagine at 156 brake horsepower that's uh, about the same as my Panigale unbelievable really um, but there we go so that's the uh, the new Enduro what do you think of that do you think it looks good I certainly do. All right, next story. 
<laughs> and again, here we go, flip-flopping between what I think are nice looking bikes and what maybe aren't. The, the Beast gets extra power is the headline here. This is the KTM Super Duke GT. It's had a makeover for 2019. Uh, it's got even madder is what uh, um, MCN say. It's 1301cc V-twin, same lump as in the, uh, it's the LC8 engine that's in the Super Duke R, so a nuts engine. Uh, what else have they done? It's got uh, revised resonator chambers, whatever that does, titanium inlet valves and a remap. Uh, the GT has received a boost up to 170 two brake horsepower and a whopping 103 foot pound of torque again i rode one of these a couple of years ago obviously not this most up-to-date one um it was a lovely bike to ride i mean it goes like stinky it rides very fast like the super duke R, and is a bit more comfortable but again do you like the looks of it i mean they have restyled it slightly looking at it from the side on this picture here i just think it looks horrible it looks a bit it reminds me for some reason of a rhinoceros i don't know why uh, ktm make amazing amazing bikes to ride i love riding ktms but i just don't like looking at them the super duke r looks quite nice and the right angle and i do like the uh, the fancy waspy light on the front of them and it works really well as well um beautiful bikes but uh, to ride as i say but to look at they need to have a different designer on board i think they need to if they just made the bikes sort of grab you by the heart as as well as by the head uh, in terms of looks i think they'll be on to an absolute winner because everybody loves them when they ride them anyway i'm not too keen on the super duke gt again interested to hear what you think uh, that was that one uh, next story here crikey lots of tabs that i've marked out secrets of the ftr 1200 i mentioned this just now this is the new bike from indian it's quite rare to have an absolutely brand new motorcycle but indian have thrown everything at this and this is a potential competitor for things like um, the r9t scrambler and indeed the new scrambler from triumph which i'm sure we'll talk about later um, absolutely beautiful looking bike got a sort of flat tracker vibe going actually so i suppose it's not a pure scrambler but uh, i've not been a i've never ridden an indian i'd love to ride an, an indian of some sort they're obviously traditionally a cruiser manufacturer but this thing looks really really mean can't wait to have a go on this um, uh, i don't think mcn have actually ridden it yet they're just talking about the technology behind the engine which looks awesome um, which i won't go into because i can't remember i read this <laughs> some weeks back i can't quite remember what it says but it's putting out 120 brake horsepower um i think uh yeah um and well it just looks beautiful so i can't wait to again see these once they hit the dealers and uh, and hopefully maybe get a go on one of these in the summer of next year perhaps depends when they can become available of course but lovely lovely looking bike all right so that was just a quick one there uh next story Look at this for a great looking bike as well. This is, a, this is a concept bike and we all know what happens with concept bikes. They tend to look great when they're a concept and then when they hit the manufacturers because of regulations or hit the um, production schedules rather, um, they tend to get dumbed down because of um, you know the various regulations in various markets. But this is what Honda is showing as a new uh, Neo CAF racer as they call it. It's a 650cc machine. I think it looks absolutely brilliant. In particular, I love the front light on it, the way they've done this sort of slitty arrangement. And I love the four into two pipe work they've got on here it looks brilliant i can't imagine that exhaust would get through emission standards uh, no one else can do fancy exhaust like that at the moment even with euro 4 let alone euro 5 but crikey if a new one comes out that looks like that that'll be amazing won't it they're saying based on the price of the current cb650f we're expecting the cb650r which is what this is uh, to be around eight thousand pounds that's amazing so that's going to be a competitor with things like the ktm 790 duke a bike that i quite liked well found it found it a little bit uncomfortable on a long run it didn't blow me away as much as a lot of the reviewers said i must admit but uh, this thing looks amazing um haven't ridden that many hondas this is one i'm probably going to have to go and uh, go and have a go on once it hits the streets again because uh, it does look amazing doesn't it or i think it does again you may disagree let me know if you do so there we go that's the uh, that's the new cb 650r nice looking machine okay next story here monkey nuts is the headline i'm sure you've seen lots about this this is the new revamped honda monkey bike it's uh based on the what we call the honda grom um and it uh, harps back to the old um, monkey bikes of the 1970s uh, and uh, all reports that i've seen of this people that have ridden them uh, reviews i've read all can't say anything you know too good about this bike it's a hoot to ride it's fantastic to look at it's an absolute hoot and it's only 3699 i say only 3699 it is of course a small size 125 cc bike so draw your own conclusions as to whether that's good value or not uh, and i noticed um my friend rj has recently bought one of these as well so he obviously likes it and he's a discerning rider of course um but uh, anyway despite all that I, I personally don't really like the looks of it I, everybody says it's cute and yeah it's cute but would i want one i don't think i would i rode a little um uh, one another one of these mini bikes a while back it was a, i think it was a benelli was it a benelli 
can't remember what it was now, but it's in my in my history, uh, in my bike reviews. If you look back in my 125cc reviews, you'll find it. It was an Italian bike, looked, I think, much better than this and was just as equal fun uh, and was about half the price, I think. Um, but again, I've never ridden one. I've not seen one in the flesh up close. Hopefully I will get to ride one. Uh, I'm sure it will be a hoot and a lot of fun to ride. I'm just not sure I would like to be riding one. And I'm not sure, even sure I like the looks. Is it just me? Because uh, I seem to be the old one out here. Everybody else seems to love the monkey bike. But, but there we go. That's the monkey bike. They took it again on the MCN 250. Um, didn't have anything bad to say about it. I mean, look, when you're on the thing, you look absolutely ridiculous. Maybe that's part of the fun. I don't know. Let's just have a quick look at what their verdict was. Honda has done a great job with monkey and creating a bike that looks fantastic. Well, I disagree. But importantly, it's far more than just a simple retro toy. Uh, basically, they say with things like ABS and the LED headlight on the front, it's brought bang up to date and it's, uh, it may be retro looking, but it's um, absolutely a modern bike. So uh, anyway, I'll have to have a crack on one just because it looks hilarious. But um, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure whether I'd actually want one. Maybe I'll change my mind, I don't know. Interested to hear what you think. I think I might be the odd one out on that. Okay. To the important stuff then, <laughs> MCN's bike of the year. Uh, and uh, here we are, you can see it, Ducati Panigale V4S. This is the bike that they've said, out of all the bikes they've ridden this year, uh, this is the one that they like the best. It is an absolute beast. I've never ridden one. I'm very glad to say that uh, I'm picking one of these up for long-term loan next week uh, from Ducati UK. Cannot wait to get a ride on it. Um, it'll be a little while before you see the videos, but uh, I intend, of course, to do uh, my initial impressions review when I first picked it up. Uh, then I, I, I will obviously ride it in all sorts of conditions and do a, a, a sort of an in-depth review after a few weeks with it. Uh, plus, what I want to do is compare it on a looks front with the original Panagala because I've got my 899, which has exactly the same fairings and shape as the original uh, uh, 1199 Panigale that came out. Was it an 1199? Yes, it was. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this shape has evolved because it still looks very much Panigale esque, but it looks a bit meaner. Uh, I'm not sure whether I prefer this looks or the old one. It's a bit more angular now, but again, that's a bit of an anorax type guide I'll be doing uh, of what the current Panigale looks like versus what the old one looked like. So, Lots of lots coming on the Panigale. If you're a Ducati Panigale fan, stay tuned to the channel. Anyway, that that got their bike of the year. They absolutely love it, um, and it is a beautiful thing. I mean, I, I love Panigales. I'm clearly unbiased, but uh, yeah, yeah, lovely bike. Can't wait to ride it. Um, it's worth just picking out some of the other um, awards that they gave. So this is the um, best innovation of the year is the Nikon. We've already talked about the Nikon, but that's the one that they're saying um, it's very clever and it works. Uh, super stable Nikon may not appeal to all, but it's clever and it works is what they say. So they're making that the best innovation of the year. And it's hard to argue with that. I mean, no one else has come out with anything quite like that. Have they? Let's have a quick flick through some of these others here. Um, the F850 GS they're saying is the best adventure of the year. Uh, again, I wouldn't strongly disagree with this. I think the F750 actually is, is the slightly better bike just because value for money. I would have gone for the F750, I think, but both basically the same bike. Lovely bike, uh, really enjoyed riding it. So yeah, sort of agree with that one. Or let's make it the 750, which is almost the same bike. New Z has cred, so the Kawasaki Z900 RS, best retro of the year. I absolutely agree with that. I love the Z900 when I rode it. I only ridden it once. I've been talking to Kawasaki UK in the last few weeks, uh, I'm hoping I'm going to get to do a long term on one of these in the new year, just a matter of what availability is, I think. But uh, that would be fantastic. I completely agree with this winning that category. I love uh, the Kawasaki Z900. I just want to ride it some more. So hopefully that's going to be happening. What else did they have? Oh, the uh, Kawasaki H2 SX SE uh, Best All Rounder, which has surprised me a little bit, actually. I, again, I have ridden this. I did like it, but. Uh, I'm not sure I'd call it the best all-rounder. Uh, I suppose it depends what you mean in that category. I'd put this in the sports touring category, but you know what is an all-rounder? I'd argue my GS, for example, is an all-rounder. But anyway, um, they have to decide on something. It's all subjective, isn't it? Your opinion may be different to mine, and mine's different to MCN in this one. I'm not sure what I would put in the best all-rounder category, so something's got to go there. Did like the H2 SX SE, though. Again, completely different sort of bike. Um, um, very distinctive. You're going to be noticed on it, aren't you? Uh, what else have we got? Uh, they put in the Honda CB125R as the uh, best 125 of the year. Haven't ridden that, so can't comment. Best sub 500cc with the KTM 390 Duke. Completely agree with that. Love the 390 Duke when I rode it. I'll be happy to have one of those in the garage for a small engine bike. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, what else have they got? Uh, cool cuts. Best scooter of the year, BMW C400X. Haven't ridden that, so can't comment. Uh, best naked street triple. Uh, which one are they saying? The Street Triple R, they're giving that. Uh, again, can't disagree with that. Street Triple fanboy, as you know. And then there's loads more detail on the on the uh, Panigale V4. So there we go. So uh, that's everything in that paper. Alrighty, moving on then. 
Now I'm recording this slightly differently to normal in that um, I haven't yet received this week's uh, paper. It should be due any minute. It's uh, 20 past 11. Don't think the postman's been, but I've said that before on these reviews and then it's been sat on the mat. So I'll go and, uh, I'll go and have a check in a minute. But this, uh, this could be the last paper uh, and then we'll go through some parish notices, some news to give you about what's coming up on the channel. Oh, let's just fire that up again. All right then, so I uh, can't quite remember what I've pulled out here. So first one I've got a tab on. Here we go, Tenere 700 prototype. Um, here we go, uh, Nick Sanders has been out uh, trying out the new 700 prototype uh, of the Tenere. This is a highly respected bike. This is one of the ones that you could argue sort of started the adventure uh, big off-road trailer type genre, you could argue. Now they've brought out the smaller version. I rode the big Tenere, the Super Tenere. Um, again, it was the, earlier this year, the 1200. Really loved it, actually. Beautiful bike in terms of riding. Not too sure I get on with the Dakar looks. Uh, some people love that, and that's what they've done here. I'm sure this will ride beautifully well, um, but it does have, again, that very upright stance that a Dakar, a Dakar machine uh, would have. I'm sure it's super capable off-road, long travel, suspension, everything else. Uh, Nick Sanders says he loves it, um, So, but then maybe he works for Yamaha, so I don't know. But anyway, it looks the business, um, but it is going to be quite tall. Again, maybe that'll be, I don't know when that hits the shops, but uh, this is only the prototype, so I imagine it'll be a while yet, but uh, we'd love a go on that when it comes around, so fingers crossed. Okay, next up I've picked up uh, story number two in last week's paper. MV's F4 goes out in style. This is a shame. This is the MV Augusta. Um, I have to, I said that in a weird way because people always pick me up on how I pronounce stuff. Is it MV Augusta, Augusta, whatever. Um, anyway, the uh, M4 is going out of production, unfortunately, because of Euro 5 coming in. It's Euro 4 compliant, I think, but they've not revamped it for Euro 5, so you're not going to be able to get the F4 anymore, which is a shame because I think this is up there with the likes of the Panigale and the R1 is the best looking sports bikes out there. A lovely machine, uh, very rare. You don't see them around very much. They produced this um, this special edition, uh, 213 bhp, 175 kilograms dry. It weighs. It's got the, it's uh, based on the World Superbike homologation F4 RC, so it's going to go like stink. Um, amazing looking bike with BST carbon wheels. Great paint job amazing Brembo's, you know, all the latest trinkets on it. However, it's 64 grand. So uh, you're really gonna wanna love uh, the F4, aren't you? I think I just heard the postman come. Yes, he did. Let's hope he brought today's MTN. Uh, so you're really gonna wanna love the F4 to get that, aren't you? 64 grand, who on earth is gonna get one of those? Blimey. Anyway, it is sad to see that go because it's a beautiful, beautiful looking bike. Um, so maybe get yourself a second hand normal F4 and they're probably gonna be an appreciating asset. Fast learners. Now, MCN again on their on their 250, sometimes they, on the MCN 250, their test route, 250 miles long, they sometimes put um, group tests together. And here, they've tested A2 license friendly bikes, the KTM 390 Duke, that I've already said I love, uh, the Honda CB300R, not ridden it, looks good, and Husqvarna, again, another one I've got to be careful about how I pronounce, uh, because I've been calling it the Husqvarna when I've been doing the reviews of the 701 Supermoto, more on that coming soon on the channel. Um, but I've been told off for calling it Husqvarna, some people have said it's Husqvarna, some people have said it's other things, I don't know, whatever, you know what I'm I'll just call it Husky. Anyway, the Vitpillen, or the Svartpillen, sorry, 401 Svartpillen, uh, meaning black arrow, and this is the 401, so this is the for want of a better term, entry level bike, if you like, costing 5,599. Not ridden it yet. Again, talking to Husky, uh, they're quite keen for me to ride these. I'd love to ride them because they look completely different. I've, I've no idea how they go. But anyway, so MCN have done the review of these. I won't take you through all the details, but I'm interested to see whether they've come up with this, with uh, the conclusion I'm expecting that's the 390 is the best. What have they said? Uh, they've given the Duke 3, ah, actually, <laughs> all three have got three out of five stars. That's, that's amusing, isn't it? What have they said in the write up? Uh, the hustle, blah, 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 blah. The KTM can match the spark bill in every way, blah, 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 but has superior clocks, mirror, and da, da, Honda CB. What are they saying here? It's hard to fault the Honda. It does everything you'd expect. It's easy to ride. In this company, it lacks performance and excitement. If you want a fun commuter, look no further. The Husqvarna almost edges out the KTM. Innovative styling, but it's not 900 better than the KTM. KTM can match the spot. So actually, it's saying it's close, but the KTM uh, does just edge it for them, which is which is great. I mean, I've not ridden those other bikes, so I can't really comment, but I really love the um, KTM 390 Duke. And actually, that is an example of a bike. When I was saying earlier on in this review that I didn't like the way that KTMs looked other than the Super Duke R, I do like the way the, the 390 looks. Don't know why, because it's ostensibly very similar to the other bikes they make, but I think they just hit it exactly right with the 390. It's lightweight, it's fun to ride, it goes well, it looks brilliant, it's packed with technology for a bike of its class. I really love it. Um, and at 4,699, I think a winner. And I would really love one of those in the garage. I'd be happy to have one of those in my garage. Really nice. Anyway, so yeah, just edges the others in that company. Alrighty, uh, next story before I go and see what the postman has brought me. 
New Ducati is a trailblazer. Ah, this is the test of the Multistrada Enduro. We talked about it at the beginning of the review, so I'll say no more on this other than to just give you a pricey of the verdict. Uh, they've not given it a star rating. 17,755 on the road, so about 18 grand. Uh, 1.3 litre, 254 kilogram off-roader is always going to be a beast, but Ducati have softened the blow with friendlier ergonomics, polished out trunks and easier low-down grunt. Uh, if you're only going to get your wheels muddy once in a blue moon, the sharp road going 1260 Multistrada is the best option to go for. So they're saying, yep, yeah, nice. If you're doing some off-roading, green laning or whatever on it, then go for it. But who in their right mind is going to take an 18 grand uh, exotic off-road? I'm certainly not. Some people do maybe, but I would suggest most people wouldn't. Um, in which case, you're probably better off getting the road focus one is what they're saying. So interesting. Okay, and then the last story in here. Um, oh, this is, um, this is great. This is... Um, a going places article at the end of um, MCN they often have um, different rides to do and I don't often feature them on the on the news review but this one I want to do feature because it's called no game without Spain and it's talking about the best roads in Spain I've recently returned from Spain a couple of weeks ago I've been up with Toro Adventure off-roading on the on the GS some videos coming up on that soon uh, and then I've done a tour as well around Andalusia again I'm just editing those videos at the moment they'll be out soon but I can't help but agree Spain is just amazing to ride and they've picked out some of the very same roads that I recently rode in Spain in particular the uh, Marbella to Ronda road the A397 a brilliant road got a video coming up with that included soon and and the CA9104, uh, Puerto de las Palomas, uh, goes down. It's in the uh, Zahara de la Sierra de Grazalema. Uh, it's a beautiful part of Spain. You'll be seeing my video soon. Uh, but this time of year as well, here we are in, you know, just knocking on the door now in November. You can still get to Spain. If you're lucky, you can get some nice weather. Having said that, I was lucky enough to be in Mallorca over the weekend. The weather there was anything but nice and uh, it's not too nice in Spain and indeed most of Central Europe at the moment. So give it a few weeks till the next weather system's through. But uh, you can get some great weather any time of year down in that part of south of Spain. Flights are cheap. Go and ride a bike down there. You'll love it. All right, that's it for that paper. As I say, the postman has been. So just give him a moment. I'm going to go and pop to the uh, post box and see if he's brought today's MCN and then we'll have a quick flick through. Okay, so happy days. The postman did indeed bring today's MCN. It is hot off the press, so I won't, uh, won't go through in great detail. Clearly, I haven't ridden, uh, read it fully yet. I've just uh, skimmed through it for a couple of stories I thought you might be interested in seeing. But uh, this is out today. Uh, MCN clearly wanted to go and buy it, so I'm not going to steal their thunder by gifts showing you everything that's in it. So go and buy the paper if you want to. But this is what it looks like on the front and the headline, new versus old BMW R1250 GS. That's going to be interesting to see what they've got to say about that because, uh, of course, I've done my own comparison of the two recently again look back over my old videos if you haven't seen the last couple of weeks I've uh, ridden the new 1250GS and a bit of, did a bit of a comparison of my old one versus the new one. Anyway we'll come to that in a second. First thing I just want to pull out here, I mentioned it earlier so I feel I have to talk about it, Scrambling Style is the headline here um, and MCN are talking about the brand new Triumph um, 1200 Scrambler. I won't go into what they've said because uh, I haven't read, read it yet quite frankly but I did go to the public launch of this last week uh, up at the Excel Centre in London, again video on the channel if you haven't seen it. Um, very strange launch event, but anyway, we won't dwell on that. But what an amazing looking bike. And by all accounts, it seems that these are gonna be proper scramblers and that they can go off-road in, that they've got long travel suspension, uh, they've got all the right kit, they've got amazing Olin's, um, not Olin's, well actually they've got Olin's suspension, plus they've got Brembo uh, M50 proper brakes. They look like they're gonna be really performant machines. Uh, I really like the looks of these, the XE in particular. When you see them in the flesh, lovely, lovely bike. I cannot wait to ride one. Uh, this is a bike that I think I may have to splash out some of my pension money on. <laughs> um, it's just an amazing looking bit of kit. I don't know um, if I'll lose a bike or whether it's an as well as. I don't really like losing any bikes. I'm more of a collector than a swapper. But this just looks lovely. I think um, it's going to be hard to resist if it rides as well as it looks. I'm going to be very tempted with one of them. Anyway, that's, that's the Scrambler. Um, we shall see. I'll read the review and see what they've said about it a bit later. If you want to read the review, then get the paper. Uh, second one here. Just pick this up because uh, buy into Aprilia's bad boy. I mentioned this because I just, again, published a video. Uh, my latest Reader's Rides uh, was with Phil. Uh, he brought his Aprilia uh, V4 Tuono factory round. And they've now brought out an updated version, the 2019 V4 factory. Just launched. Don't know what the price is yet. Looks like this. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's improved over the old bike. Whether it's a massive improvement I don't know. What I would say is I don't think I like the graphics quite as much as the previous version. The one that Phil brought around had the green in as well. This is just um, red and black and white. The other one had green as I say. I just think it looked a little bit better. But um, I think it did. Oh actually no here's the other one. Maybe it didn't have green. But either way I prefer the graphics on the old one. Um, the old one it's saying £12,000 you can get one uh, for. That'd be nice. They found one for twelve grand with 4,100 miles. Maybe that's the one to go for. Who knows. Anyway again it'd be great if uh, I could get a ride of the new revamped one of those. I'm uh, 
sort of in discussion about that. That may or may not happen, but I really love the Tuono. What a bike. Uh, another one that I thought, mm, this is one that maybe I should be spending some of my limited funds on. Anyway, uh, swiftly moving on. Next thing I've pulled out here is indeed that uh, uh, comparison of the two bikes, new boxer tricks. I will tell you what they said about this because I think the conclusion is much the same as what I had. Uh, Adam Child has done the, the ride around the 250 and done the comparison. He said, if you own an R1200 GS and believe it's a perfect bike for you, then stay happy and stick with it. That's basically what I said. And at the end he says, if you're not a GS owner, because you've always found them a little boring and unexciting, uh, try the new model. It's now far more electric guitar than acoustic. So, uh, so there we go. So yeah, his conclusion is much the same as mine. But uh, look forward to reading all the detail in that this afternoon when I'm having a little relax. Anyway, so that's this week's paper. Uh, if you want to get it in detail, uh, get the news agent out today. All right, that's that. Uh, as usual, I said I'd give you a few parish notices at the end of the video. So a few things that I uh, just want to tell you are coming up or, or about the channel. So first thing, actually, you know, this is not really to do with the YouTube channel, but uh, I've, uh, I have social media accounts on Twitter and Facebook, and I've got a few followers on there, and I tend to post stuff on there as it happens. So if I'm riding a, um, a particular bike, then I'll, I'll put a snap whatever on there, uh, so you'll get a heads up on what's going to be coming on the channel down the line. Often I record things up to two months in advance, so you get an early heads up on what's coming if you follow me on those social media channels. But uh, I haven't been on Instagram for ages, I've been fighting against it, because frankly it's enough work just to keep up to date with Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and emails. Um, but anyway, everybody's saying, why aren't you on Instagram? So I am now on Instagram, so uh, I'm trying to build my following on there. If you are on Instagram, you like that sort of thing, uh, then do follow me on there, just look up Missenden Flyer, and there I'll be. Not posted too much on there yet, still trying to work out exactly what Instagram's about, not quite sure, um, but I'm gonna try and use it more and more, so follow me on Instagram, I'll I'd be really grateful if you can because I want to build that up. So that's the first thing. Uh, next thing is I said that I've been off-roading uh, on the GS in Spain recently. First one of those videos goes up on Friday. So the, the Norway tour has now finished. Uh, thank you for all your kind comments on that tour. Uh, I obviously thoroughly enjoyed the tour and uh, and I got loads of comments and loads of views. So really grateful that you, you watched that and liked that. Um, but uh, some people have said they're gonna be missing my Friday tours. Well, fear not, because another little one is starting up this Friday. There's two in this particular series. This Friday uh, is the first one, as I say, and then there's some more coming uh, in a few weeks time. But anyway, so look out for that. Oh, must just thank my sponsors for this video, Custom Fit Guards. People have asked, these are the, these are the earplugs that you see me um, wearing uh, when I'm out on my tours on the GS. You will have seen me you know, taking these out when I stop on the bike and stuff. Lots of people ask me what they are. Well, if you want to know what they are, check out the details below in the description. The details are always at the bottom of my videos. Custom Fit Guards make them. They're these, as the name suggests, custom fitted guards that go in your ear, they mold to you, and they just, they're brilliant, particularly for touring, they're very comfortable, work very well, but uh, more on those in another video in a, in a week or two's time. But uh, thanks to Custom Fit Guards for sponsoring this video and my live streams. Um, next up, um, oh, change to my upload schedule. You may or may not have twigged that I upload videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, or try to, and for the last two years, non-stop, there hasn't been a Monday, Wednesday or Friday where I haven't posted a video. Uh, that's all well and good. I'm not intending to stop making as many videos, but what I am in intending to do is changing the way I schedule them a bit. Because I have scheduled so far in advance, I just mentioned I do um, record videos two to three months in advance. Uh, sometimes it can be a bit inflexible, my schedule. So what I'm gonna do instead is just publish videos on Mondays and Thursdays, starting in November. Um, and then any other videos that I do, things that are topical, things like, um, uh, like the launch of last week of the Triumph, for example, stuff that comes up suddenly that I don't necessarily know that it's coming up and has some sort of a time limited value, or the GS, the new GS uh, ride that I did, uh, I want to be able to record those and put them straight out without having to schedule them in. Plus things come up sometimes that I'd just like to get out earlier than I otherwise would do. So by doing scheduled ones on Mondays and, uh, and Thursdays, that will make sure I know what's coming down the line and stuff that's in the can will get out. Plus it'll give me flexibility to publish other stuff in between times. Also, uh, let's be honest, it might mean that there'll be some weeks where I only post two videos, but we'll see how that goes. I don't intend to cut down uh, on the volume of videos. So uh, just to let you know, there's a change in the schedule uh, in case you wonder what's going on. If you have noticed that normally I do them Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that's changed into Monday, Thursday, as of November. Um, oh, thanks for all the comments on the Husky 701 Supermoto video I did, I did an initial review last week on that. I've got another two videos coming on that, of course, including my in-depth review. Keep a look out for those. They seem to have been very popular. Great bike that was, so more coming on that. Uh, oh, and then just uh, make a note as well, if you would, in your diary, next live Q&A, November the 15th uh, at 8pm 
Um, so that'll be a great chance again just to have a chat with you and interact with you live. Brilliant when you can join me on those. Absolutely love doing those. That I normally schedule them for half an hour. We end up doing an hour. Um, we'll see how it goes. Depends how many people watch or whatever or ask questions. But if you can join me live uh, on November the 15th, 8 p.m. UK time, that would be brilliant. If not, don't worry. It'll get posted up as ever as a recorded one. All right, crikey, that was a long one. Not sure exactly how long we've been running. I better get editing and uploading because I want to make sure this goes up today. All right, hope you've enjoyed that. Look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Mr. Dunfly. Cheerio.